Hurricane Sandy hit New England this week. Subway lines and tunnels were flooded in Manhattan. Atlantic City's boardwalk was wrecked, and a lot of physical damage was done. But thankfully, few lives were lost. For a moment there, it looked like it was the opposite of when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, and everything went wrong. President Barack Obama took a couple days off from the campaign trail this week to make sure he looked presidential, releasing photos of himself in the White House's Situation Room and visiting New Jersey for a photo op. He started campaigning again yesterday, and his friends in the media had rave reviews for him, saying it was all very presidential and commander-in-chiefy. Michael Bloomberg, the liberal mayor of New York, was feeling pretty good about things, too, as if this was his Rudy Giuliani on 9-11 moment. Remember, before that terrible day, Giuliani had rather worn out his welcome with New Yorkers, but he was a pillar of leadership during that crisis, not only directing the city's recovery, but inspiring the city and the world. Bloomberg has outlived his political welcome in New York, too. He barely squeaked in for his term, third term as mayor against a weak opponent and was becoming better known for his bizarre campaigns against trans fat, salt, and large soft drink containers. So this was his moment to look big after looking very petty for very long. So he pounced. Remember, Bloomberg isn't just a mayor. He's a billionaire worth more than $20 billion. He's the 10th richest man in America. He owns a media empire named after himself. And so he put that to his political use this week. Here's the cover of Bloomberg Business Week. It's global warming, stupid, is what it says. Seriously, the water hasn't even receded. Power hasn't even been restored. But Bloomberg wasn't going to wait for other people to praise him. He'd praise himself. Everything that went right was his doing. Everything went wrong. Well, that was global warming's fault. And if you dare to point out that, well, you know, weather isn't the same as climate, a storm isn't the same as global warming. In fact, global warming leveled off in 1998. There were much more devastating hurricanes in the 1930s and 1950s. If you point any of that out, you're stupid, according to the cover. Shut up, he explained. And Bloomberg used his Bloomberg media to issue an endorsement of Barack Obama on the same day. Again, pegged to the hurricane and scientist Bloomberg's theory that it had to do with global warming, stupid. In his endorsement of Obama, here's what Bloomberg wrote, quote, our climate is changing, and while the increase in extreme weather we have experienced in New York City and around the world may or may not be the result of it, the risk that it might be, given this week's devastation, should compel all elected leaders to take immediate action. Hmm, hang on. Bloomberg's front page cover told us that you're stupid if you deny global warming caused the hurricane, but... Inside his endorsement, he says he's not quite sure, but he is sure of one thing, the need for immediate action, no matter what. He's got a list of things he wants done, but they're pretty weird. He wants higher fuel mileage on cars and trucks, something that will make cars and trucks more expensive to buy. I'm not really sure how that endorsement will go over in Michigan and Ohio, and he wants to shut down coal-fired power plants, too. This is part of his endorsement. These are reasons he's endorsing Obama, he says. I'm pretty sure Obama isn't circulating this endorsement on the campaign trail in coal mining states like Ohio or half the country that runs on coal-fired power. My favorite line from his endorsement of Obama, though, is this. Quote, I want our president to place scientific evidence and risk management above electoral politics. That's hilarious, because not only does Bloomberg admit that he has no clue that global warming had anything to do with the hurricane, but we know that his proposed solutions, oh, by the way, he also talks about gun control and abortion on demand, have nothing to do with the hurricane either. It's pure politics. He's the political one. Even if every single car were taken off the road in the United States and every single coal-fired power plant was shut down, the climate wouldn't change. Even the UN climate bureaucrats admit as much. And in any event, the spectacular growth of carbon emissions in China would make, for that, make up for that in about a month. Michael Bloomberg's endorsement was little more than a vanity effort, an irrelevant mayor in the twilight of his career trying to inject himself into a very important and exciting presidential race in which Bloomberg once considered running himself. Really, Bloomberg's foolish endorsement was little more than the same publicity stunt that Donald Trump tried last week when he promised to donate $5 million to charity if Barack Obama releases his college records. It was a rich guy wanting to be relevant. But we expect that from Trump. I mean, he's a showman. He's a casino impresario and a TV reality show promoter. He hosts Miss America, for crying out loud. It's his job to showboat. Mayor of New York, though, is supposed to be a, a touch more serious.
But there it was, Bloomberg seizing a political moment to grandstand. It was weak. It was the usual global warming, junk science and junk economics. It was just more nanny statism from the man who wants to tell you what size of pop you can drink. And reducing carbon emissions was a laugh coming from a man who takes his own private jet every weekend to his massive private estate on Bermuda. But fine, fine. That's Bloomberg being Bloomberg. No biggie. I doubt a single person in Ohio or Florida said, hey, I was undecided about this election until now, but seeing that Bloomberg is for Obama, I guess I am too. Yeah. Anyways, that was yesterday. But overnight, things started to change. Things have started to turn sour. Bloomberg's politicization of the hurricane, his self-congratulations, seems not only vain now, but premature and arrogant. There is still no power in much of New York or Connecticut or other affected regions in the area, and some reports say the power will be off until November 11th. It's not just dark at night, it's getting cold too. No power means a lot of things don't work, including a lot of gas stations. There are now mile-long lineups, six hours for people desperate to fill up their cars. And no power and no gas means no grocery stores, no restaurants. People are actually going hungry. Pictures of New Yorkers dumpster diving for food or filling the Internet. New York, the world's capital city, the most resilient city, the city that survived 9-11, the city of glamour, the city that never sleeps, has been reduced in some neighborhoods to a shambles, to a Lord of the Flies chaos, to a place that desperately needs help, but those supposed to help are too busy on TV praising themselves. Those awesome pictures of President Obama in the White House Situation Room, that triumphalism, yeah, a touch quick off the mark. Hurricane Sandy is the savior of the Obama campaign? Yeah, not really. In the days before Hurricane Sandy, Obama's Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, boasted that it had 400 large generators on standby to provide emergency power in New England. But only 70 of them are set up now. Where are the rest? Who knows? Maybe they violated some environmental rule. You know, they burn diesel, so they have all those carbon emissions Bloomberg was on about. Or as one horrific news report has it, maybe the people who were coming to New England to help weren't members of a labor union. A group of emergency workers up from Alabama were not allowed to work in New Jersey because they weren't unionized. And just like things started to rot in New Orleans, they're starting to do so in New York too. Looters dressed up as power company workers are stealing the place blind. The price of gas is over six bucks a gallon. That's even higher than here in Canada. People are siphoning it out of each other's cars. Fist fights are breaking out over shortages. Guns drawn. All of a sudden, Bloomberg is looking less like Giuliani and more like New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin, the conspiracy theorist kook of a mayor who presided over the destruction of that once great city. Nagin, you'll recall, took steps to get his own family to safety out of Hurricane Katrina. But he didn't start the emergency evacuation plan of the low-lying areas of New Orleans for the rest of the city. Here are pictures of hundreds of school buses that were part of New Orleans' emergency evacuation plan that Nagin never bothered to implement. That's a major reason why so many people there drowned. And Obama, jetting in for a photo op and then jetting right back out, is looking like the media's caricature of George W. Bush during Katrina. But the thing about Obama and Bloomberg is their massive, enormous self-regard. Once they've declared themselves awesome, once they've declared that Hurricane Sandy recovery is success, they really don't have enough humility to admit that maybe things aren't fixed yet. So they slouch forward in the face of the facts. But here's proof. This weekend is the New York City Marathon. But the thing about that is that it takes thousands of city police and other first responders to put that huge event on, and thousands of volunteers too. And of course, it doesn't just take people. It takes equipment, like power generation, generators and even food. So while hundreds of thousands of people in the area, including right in New York City, are without power, Mayor Bloomberg is pressing on with his marathon, taking power generators and food and cops off the recovery campaign and putting it on the jogging games. Here is the cover of today's New York Post showing the building outrage. You know, the New York Times said that crises like Sandy prove the need for big government, but it's not big government that's solving the problem. I see news that 12 different food cart companies, private companies, are sending their mobile restaurants to parts of New York without power. Many of them are just plain old giving the food away. That's amazing. That's the private sector's charitable response. While the politicians are out doing the talk show circuit, or talking about banning carbon, or worry about keeping out non-union salvage crews, or worry even more about media events like the marathon. 
Michael Bloomberg proceeding with this marathon just days after the hurricane, while so many people are still in jeopardy, would be as if Mayor Ray Nagin in New Orleans would have put on a Mardi Gras parade just days after Katrina, taking money and manpower off of his real work to mug for the cameras. This is not going well for the people of New York. And it's not going to go well over the next 96 hours in the election campaign for a president who has no natural commander or decision-making skills and for a mayor who just put out a magazine congratulating himself. But let me close with one more observation. Parts of New York are actually living Bloomberg's dream. Long fuel line lineups, no power. Why, that's exactly what a low carbon footprint means, doesn't it? Isn't the whole notion of a low carbon, low growth, low energy economy precisely that people shouldn't drive around, or in Bloomberg's case, jet around? Isn't the economic model that Bloomberg praises, the one that he thinks Obama is going to force on America, isn't the idea of Earth Hour and Turn the Lights Off Hour really just another way of saying to deindustrialize? Hell, I'm sure some deep green wackos could even make the case that New York itself is an industrial blight on the earth and that this was just Mother Nature reclaiming its proper place, putting the earth back in balance. I mean, open pit land, mines should be reclaimed. Why not an open pit whole city, too? Look, Bloomberg's endorsement is impotent. It won't sway a single vote for Obama. It was nothing more than a vanity statement and maybe an attempt for Bloomberg to flatter his way into an Obama cabinet position if Obama's reelected. The people of New York will recover from this. They recovered from much worse on 9-11. But what's clear here is that leadership matters. Experience matters. Judgment matters. And serious people matter in serious positions of power. Michael Bloomberg shouldn't be the mayor. He should be a jet-setting playboy. Barack Obama shouldn't be president. He should be a nagging college professor. Hurricanes will continue to happen, as they always have. People will have to rebuild after them, as they always do. To me, there is only one real question from this whole mess, and it's this. If it's going to cost, say, $20 billion to repair Hurricane Sandy, who do you think would do a better job of running that? Barack Obama, his teleprompter, and his pal Michael Bloomberg, or Mitt Romney, businessman, builder, and leader? Yeah. Just four more days, people.